Hey everyone, welcome to Live Your Language, where I talk and I post all about raising your child bilingually. I'm Stephanie, a PhD student in second language acquisition and a mother to a son that I'm raising in my non-native language. Today I'm going to be talking all about how you can create a language bubble for you and your toddler to support language development. If you didn't see last week's episode, be sure to check the show notes because this is the second part of a two-part series and the first part has lots of great tips as well. So let's dive in. If you're like me and you're raising your child in your non-native language, then you know that half the battle for providing high quality, high quantity input for your child is making sure that you don't switch back into your native language. One of the things I highly recommend, if you haven't already, make sure that you switch the interface language for your devices, be it your phone or your computer or even your um, smart devices into the language that you're trying to teach your child. By doing this, you can make sure that your brain doesn't have to constantly switch between two languages. The other benefit is that that way you will also find the new vocabulary or whatever it is that you're trying to look up, be it a recipe or um, an answer to a question. You can find those answers in your non-native language or in the language that you're trying to teach your child. And that way, if you have to talk about it or if it comes up, you'll have the right um, native-like uh, vocabulary that goes along with that topic. Something that has been a real game changer for me has been changing the language for my Google Home Hub into French, which is the language that I'm trying to teach my child. Hey Google. Bonjour. Bonjour Stéphanie. Voici votre journée. Il y a un seul événement aujourd'hui. The really awesome thing about this is because the language technology is so native-like, it's almost like having another person to talk with in that language. If you have a Google Home Hub, you can make it so that it recognizes your voice. And then you can go into your settings and change your language to French or whatever language it is that you're teaching your child. That way, every time you say, hey Google, it recognizes that it should be looking for French or whatever the language is. So that way, if you don't say, if you don't form um, a well-formed sentence or you have issues with pronunciation, it really, really helps you develop that and take care of that issue quickly because then you, um, you, know, you won't be able to check the weather or the news or whatever it is that you wanna look up. So at first it can be really frustrating, I admit, but I can definitely tell you that my skills in asking um, the smart device for weather and all sorts of things like that have improved tremendously and very quickly just because I heard too many times that it couldn't understand what I was asking it. And the other thing I should mention is if you're in a bilingual household and your partner or spouse or whoever you live with does not speak the language that you're trying to teach your child, don't worry because you can actually have the device recognize your voice and expect a different language from you from your spouse so don't worry that your husband or whoever is not going to be able to understand and use the device I will say it is a little um, it, sometimes it has trouble um, when it doesn't recognize a voice it may switch between both languages but overall I would say for the most part it kind of knows which language to expect from who and it doesn't really interact interrupt anyone else's usage of the device there is a fabulous app, it's called TuneIn, and the really great thing about it is that it gives you access to news, podcasts, and all sorts of auditory input that you can access from other countries. So there's even a search function where you can go down and choose the country that you want. So I highly recommend it. Look down in the show notes, I'll, I'll leave a link to it. Um, but the other nice thing is that you can even find podcasts on there. So I found a children's podcast that's really fabulous. It goes through things like dogs and um, animals and vehicles and just talks a little bit about all those sorts of things, but in French and it's designed for French children. So I think that that is a really great resource and I'm sure that if you look it up, you'll find some way to integrate it into your life. And I've talked a lot about ways that you can provide high quality, high quantity input for your child. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can get that input from other people. So one of the ways that you can do this is by hiring a tutor or a language instructor. So if you're like me, um, you know, I always love developing my languages. I've signed up for lessons online. I 
use italki.com, which is a really fabulous website. Um, I love this website. I've used it to learn. I've taught on this website. I highly recommend it. Um, but I never thought when I was learning to even search for children's lessons or um, instructors that are comfortable working with children. Not until I actually got a request for teaching a child and then I realized that there are actually a lot of teachers on that website that are comfortable teaching children and for younger kids maybe not teaching but interacting with them and just providing that source of needed um, native level input. So I recommend going on that website, checking it out, and seeing if you can find people who are teaching children in the language that you're teaching your child, especially in remote areas where it's really difficult to find um, native speakers in the language that you're teaching your child. This can be a huge resource. Other ways you can get native speakers speaking to your children is by getting an au pair. Au pairs are a really great way to have contact with a native speaker every single day and to share your culture and your language as well. As long as you make your expectations clear that the language that you want them to speak with your child in is um, you know, their native language, not English, it can work out really well. So um, that's something that you can definitely look into. Now, if you're not looking for childcare per se, you can look for um, an exchange program that's looking for host families for exchange students. This is another nice um, way to get a native speaker into your household speaking to your child every day. The last tip I wanna mention is make sure that you get plugged into a community because um, this is one way that you can find tips and um, just resources, books, TV shows, podcasts, just all sorts of things that you can use with your child. Um, one specific uh, niche I really uh, recommend looking for is look for your expat community, your local expat community, um, because this group of people have a vested interest in keeping their language alive with their kids because they're here in um, you know, a place where English is spoken every day. In my case, English is spoken every day. Um, and it's really important for that group to make sure that the kids grow up with links to their native um, culture and their native language. So I find that um, plugging into these newsletters and uh, Facebook groups really make it so that you have a, just another level of um, connection and resources that might not be available to you if you just kind of um, stay on the fringes of um, you know non-native of speakers looking for resources. So that is a group, if you look for any group to join, um, I highly recommend trying to plug into that expat group. Okay, that was part two of my tips for creating a language environment for your child to grow up bilingually. If you found these useful, please hit the subscribe button and also let me know, are there any tips that I missed? Is there anything you would add to this video? Is there something I'm not thinking of? Please let me know down in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.